Director Neil Marshall has not been able to catch a break in recent memory. Sure, he was nominated for an Emmy for his work on Game of Thrones and has directed several television episodes with a filmic quality that's very difficult to obtain on television's notoriously tight budget constraints, but after finding early acclaim in his debut indie B movie Dog Soldiers and following it up with what is considered by many as one of the scariest horror movies of the 21st century, his next two films just did not generate the same call status. It took him nearly 10 years to ever direct another feature film, which ended up being Hellboy, but frankly the less said about that the better. However, given the aspirations behind Marshall's early work and his influences as a filmmaker, I've always felt he's a wasted talent because it seems like he never truly unlocked his potential as a filmmaker. So until the day A24 gives him the green light to go back to his roots, I want to call attention to his most acclaimed work and explore just how inventive and mature he was when it came to delivering on a genuinely harrowing horror experience. It was a creature feature established around the true, unrelenting fear of darkness, drowning, and claustrophobia. In Marshall's words, it was about capturing the pure authenticity of human phobias and extracting us completely from our comfort zones, where just as we begin to think things can't get any worse, they begin to get much, much worse. So let's talk about The Descent. The Descent is a pretty simple film, and thank god for that, because it just gets right to the point in terms of throwing you into a spelunking expedition where a group of longtime friends get lost within deep, dark, undiscovered caves and try to find their way out while dealing with the usual dangers of tight, entrapping tunnels, deep holes that lead to nothingness or compound fractures, and uh, oh yeah, just a casual clan of cave-dwelling monsters that want to eat them. I vaguely remember the latter being a pretty big surprise to many, because because it wasn't really a significant part of the marketing material, other than just hinting that something lives within the caves, with the environment being the true selling point as it represented the real tangible terror of the film. Granted, it's a bit of a required taste to really engage with most of the film because if you're Mr. Billy Big Balls and have absolutely no issues with darkness, drowning, or claustrophobia, then there isn't all that much here for you. That's not to say the creatures themselves aren't menacing or lacking impact. They're probably one of the best representations of a jump scare done right because they greatly depend on surprising their victims almost like xenomorphs, clinging to walls and ceilings and blending in with their environment that most of my reactions came down to a scream followed by a <laughs> I didn't see you there you sneaky son of a bitch what makes The Descent stand out amongst many other claustrophobic cave-dwelling horror movies is that Marshall puts all his efforts first and foremost into accentuating the horror of such a conventional environment, using cinematography that sometimes feels like fine footage that predates the GoPro craze, but without ever committing to said gimmick because the film works at its very best when you have absolutely zero idea where they are, where they're going, or as the voyeuristic camera work shows, what might actually be watching them. It's practically a psychological horror, and not just because of the central protagonist's haunting backstory, but more so it's the constant restlessness you feel from the disorientation and repetition of the environment. You begin to feel the same dwindling trust and hopelessness the group feel for each other, as you never sense them getting any closer to the exit. In fact, indicative of the title itself, you feel like they're just descending deeper and deeper into the abyss. Actually, more appropriately, given how the red flares begin to illuminate the cave, instead of the light making them feel any safer, it actually reinforces the cave as some symbolic hell. Any instance of daylight is a literal breath of fresh air because it's the only indication of safety given to the characters. Light is a physical solace, it's a metaphorical prop for the story. It's not like the characters are going to come across a wise, knowledgeable merchant or something like that. By the end of it, what truly solidifies the authenticity and impeccable nature of the filmmaking is that it convinces you that, yes, there could be cavemen living out there that we've never discovered, just like all those unmarked islands inhabited by primitive tribes, or like those troglodytes in Bone Tomahawk. All I'll say is, you'll never find me exploring a f***ing cave.
Anyway, going back to the psychological horror of the film, when we generally consider the term, we think of random visuals and provocative stimuli that make you question the characters and their circumstances. And yeah, that does play a substantial role in the final act of the film, but it plays more so into the broader conflict of the story. As a bottle film, it simplifies the situation to typical genre survival antics, yet before this we get a rich understanding of the relationship between the main characters. There was no denying that much of their dynamic and interactions with each other carry most of the emotional resonance of the experience. It's very nuanced in how Marshall delivers the tensions amongst the group before the stress of their circumstances pushes things over the edge. The plight of the drama falls onto our central protagonist Sarah, whose husband and daughter are viciously killed in a sudden road accident that leads her to wanting to find comfort and support for her grief through her friend's annual adventures. It doesn't need to bluntly tell us that the main friendship between Sarah, Juno and Beth has become strained over time due to Sarah wanting to seemingly grow up and settle down with her family, while Juno wants to hold on to her youth as long as possible despite their lives gradually drifting apart. It's actually the same dynamic used in The World's End, and while that's explored to a much more in-depth, painful, relatable extent in that film, The Descent consolidates the relationship symbolically through its horror. The most shocking and emotionally destructive part of the film isn't the creatures or the cave, it's seeing Sarah's life being instantly stripped away from her. And the story is not as simple as her friends trying to make her feel better. The trip is characterised by a sense of bitterness and resentment because they sense their youthful times coming to an end. In reality, people just drift apart. One minute they're there, the next minute they're not. And the descent gets across an agonising truth about growing up. It's not a soppy coming of age schoolyard melodrama. As you get older and life gets in the way, things just start to vanish. It's usually more mundane than fiction will have you believe. Of course, that's not to say dramatic life-changing events don't happen, they do, and I'm sure we can all agree with that, but The Descent has a realistic way of showing you how much internal struggle and tension exists without the characters ever having to say anything. It's all conveyed through expression and camera work. The conflict is already there. Things start uneasy and only escalate further. What are you so afraid of? You can move! Sarah, listen, the worst thing that could have happened to you has already happened, okay? And you're still here. This is just a boxy cave, and there's nothing left to be afraid of, I promise. There is a metaphor to the cave-dwelling drama of the film. It shows us how lost Sarah is in life, how the direction she once had has been consumed by a void of darkness, a darkness she's clearly running from. When the creatures attack, it's like Sarah embraces her demons. She tries to eradicate the very things that are holding her back in life. I won't directly agree with the theory that the creatures are just a figment of her imagination and she actually she killed all her friends etc because the ending is more hopeful when you consider the terms of the final moments. The alternative happy Hollywood ending of her escaping, which is technically canon because of the f***ing sequel, contradicts the entire arc of her character because she is still ultimately running away from her problems. That ending is actually negative because it just perpetuates her misery. Instead, that brutal ending where she discovers she did not escape the cave isn't tragic, it's bittersweet. She finds solace in the light of her memories of her daughter. She has nothing to lose nor anything left to fight for, she finds her coping mechanism to overcome her grief, and The Descent ends with a poignancy that is rarely seen in horror movies. It's unresolved for the audience, sure, but for Sarah, she seems content, and I guess that's what we truly want for her in the end. She's somewhat made peace with the darkness she's running from. Okay, so sorry to ruin the moment, but some folks will ask about the sequel. As far as I'm concerned, it didn't happen. I refuse to accept its existence. It's a what if and nothing more. It deserves zero f***ing credit for its existence, and I'd much rather stick my head in the badger hole outside my f***ing house. What I'm trying to say is, is it, it, it's shit. Maybe just go watch The Cave instead. It was produced several months before The Descent and actually has a remarkably similar setup and holds up much better as a sequel if you want to believe it. Well, 
Well, that was a lot to unpack. Uh, thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for sticking to the end of this video to say hi before you go. Let me know your thoughts on The Descent in the comments below. And if you are a Neil Marshall fan, let me know your favorite film from him as well. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this episode and you enjoy what I do here and you want to support the show, get early access, vote on future videos, get your name in the credits and get access to our exclusive Discord community, then please do consider heading over to Patreon where for just a few dollars a month you can get all those features and yeah help me keep the lights on and until next time uh, follow me on twitter and instagram stay very safe and i'll see you all very soon don't go down into any caves that are undiscovered unless you know what you're doing bye